morning, good morning, good morning. It is good to be with you, amen. And another beautiful, beautiful morning, amen. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen, it's good to be with you this morning, amen, on a beautiful Friday morning, amen, Friday morning, amen, um, we were just talking about, uh, I'm not going to say it, yeah, I'm not going to say it, but just a beautiful Friday morning, amen, uh, just want to start out with some, with some word, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, um, are you ready? Amen. Psalms 118 and verse 24 says, This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then John 16, 13. Come on now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Amen. The things that are to come. And then if you read 14 and 15, you got to start adding those in there. Amen. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has. All. The word all, you look it up in the Webster Dictionary, it says all inclusive. Amen. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. You have access to the resources of heaven. And you might sit, be sitting there saying, well, why, don't, why isn't my life better? Because you're not exercising that authority. Amen? You're not exercising that authority. And what happens when we don't exercise? When we don't exercise, we get flabby, we get weak, we get soft. Amen? And so it is with the things of God. If God has given you this authority and you don't exercise it, okay, you can't walk in that authority. So begin to exercise that authority. Begin to exercise the authority that God has given you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to change your words. Begin to change what you're speaking. Uh, begin to change what it is that you say on a regular basis. Begin to change that and begin to, begin to speak the word over your life. Amen? So praise God for that. Hallelujah. Hey, um, I've been on this all week and I feel like I have not even scratched the surface. Amen. Uh, but I'm going to give you more of it on Sunday. So just know that that's coming. Um, I want to encourage you to be here Sunday. Amen. Bring a friend. Don't come alone. Amen. But, but let's jump into this very quickly. I want to cover some ground. Um, um, and Because next Sunday, I'm going to try to talk to about I'm going to try to talk about Abraham, amen. Uh, God's, God just laid that heavy on me uh, about Abraham's flesh. Um, let, me just, let me just give you this, this, is that God made covenant with Abraham, okay? When you make covenant with somebody, each party brings something to the table, all right? Each party brings something to the table, all right? <clears throat> Obviously, God the Father had all, all of the universe to bring to the table, right? The promises the, the your descendants would be numbered more than the sands of the sea, more than the stars of the sky. Um, but all that Abraham had to bring was his flesh. Was his flesh. I want you to, I want you to th think about this, okay? You see, all we have, all we have is flesh. You see, and, and I've been talking about this Wednesday night. Tracy's last, a week ago Wednesday, Tracy talked about the flesh being two sides of the coin, the flesh and the spirit and the battle, right? And, and I had somebody come up to me and say, but yeah, pastor, we're flesh. We are, and God knows that. And that's what we bring to God. 
We bring to God our imperfections. We bring to God our inadequacies. We bring to God our lack. We bring to God our failures. We bring to God our sin. We bring to God our, our where we've missed it because that's, 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 that's our nature. Okay, that's our very nature. And that's all we have. So we bring that to God. And that's where we start, is in the flesh. But when we bring that to God and we surrender to God, God takes that and he transforms it from flesh into spirit. He does. And that's so powerful. So, so powerful that, that we come to God with all of our failures, with all of our inadequacies in our broken state. And God takes it and he puts it all back together and he gives it back to you in spirit. That's powerful. Amen. That we serve a God. Amen. So let's watch this. So I talked about this yesterday about how how Rahab was, was a, con, a convert, a, a proselyte, okay, of conversion to Judaism. Listen, they would not have let her marry into a Jewish person, okay? They wouldn't if she was not righteous, if she was not converted, all right? Okay, this was not some... Jewish guy that went off and got him a Gentile woman and God accepted her. No, she had had a transformation. She had heard. The word of God says she had heard and she worships the God of Israel. Okay? How do we know that? How do we know, Pastor, how do you know that she was converted? Number one, John tells us that what? Those that know God that love comes out of them. So she had love and compassion for the spies, okay? James tells us what? Our faith without works is dead. So what was her works? Is that she put her faith in God and she, right? She didn't, she didn't look at her family and where her faith was. Where was her faith? Her faith was in the God of the heavens above and the God of the earth below. That's where her faith was in. And she hid the spies. That is her works, is that she hid them, all right? Because she was walking in the faith that God would save her, okay? That God would save her. I'm gonna bring one more facet in that, but watch this, watch this. A parallel but distinctly Christian development is found in Matthew chapter one, verse five. It's what I shared with you. Where Rahab is identified as the wife of Salmon and the mother of Boaz, all right? Listen to me very carefully. This would not have happened if she had not been converted, all right? And I'm gonna use our, our current day terminology. This would not have happened if she was not saved. Because watch this, watch this. So, you got it? This accords, okay, because she, she was converted, she married, and she had a son named Boaz, who is the kinsman redeemer. You need to go read him, read about him. So this accords to Rahab, a prominent position uh, in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The son of David, the son of Abraham. So she marries into the covenant of Abraham. Whew, that's powerful. She marries into the covenant of Abraham. Okay? That's something that happened in the flesh. Right? Watch this. She marries in to the covenant of, with, of Abraham. You and I, oh, we have a better covenant. We have a better covenant because we have Jesus. We have Jesus. And we 
are grafted into the covenant of Abraham. We are adopted. That's powerful. We are adopted into the covenant of Abraham. It's not a flesh thing anymore. It's a spiritual thing. We are adopted by God as his children. Not because of Abraham's uh, uh, removing or, 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 or of the flesh, but by Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ. Now watch this, watch this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31. I recommend you read Hebrews chapter 11, the chapter of faith, you'll love it. It says this, chapter 11, verse 31. By faith, by what? By faith, say it with me. By faith, right? By faith, she had received faith. When she hid the spies, that was a demonstration of her faith. When she took the spies into her home, that was the love of God flowing out of her because she knew God. Oh, that's powerful. That'll set you free. Listen to me. So by faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient. If she did not perish with those who were disobedient, oh, here it is again, right? She was showing her obedience to God. She was demonstrating her obedience to God because of something that had taken place within her, because of a transformation, because, right? She knew God. She did not. She did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Right? It gets better. It gets better. They gave her a sign. They gave her a sign. What'd they tell her? She said, spare my family. When you come to take the city, spare my family. And they said, when we come, when we come, that she should hang a scarlet, a scarlet thread, thereby showing beforehand that through the blood of the Lord there shall be redemption unto all, unto all. She right they gave her they told her when you when we come you hang a scarlet thread out of your window and you will be spared it is through the scarlet blood of jesus christ that we are redeemed and here she is rahab the prostitute given a sign where the children of Israel, the spies that came into the city, say, you hang a scarlet thread which represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was to come, hallelujah, that would bring salvation. It was through the sign of that scarlet thread that she hung out of her window that she was spared. It gets better than that. It gets better than that. Watch this. showing, the scarlet shed showing that there shall re be redemption unto all of them that believe and hope on God. The scarlet thread, the scarlet blood of Jesus Christ, that there should be redemption for all that believe and hope on God. Whoo, that's powerful. That'll wake you up Friday morning, amen? You see, only faith you see not only, I'm sorry, you see not only faith in Rahab, but you see prophecy. You see the prophetic is found in that woman because she is showing a sign that there is to come one who would provide salvation, who would provide redemption of this flesh from the flesh into the into the spirit, from the natural into the supernatural. A sign, 
of things to come. Hallelujah. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. <clears throat> I shared this with you. Uh, Dr. S.M. Lockridge, right? Dr. S.M. Lockridge. I've been, I've been listening to his sermons. He, he's, he's from the 70s, all right? He's he, 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 powerful, powerful man of God. And, and, and I know that you've heard his stuff because there was, there was a season where somebody grabbed hold of it and began to play it and preachers began to preach it, okay? And he's talking about the seven the seven-way king. And in that, he's talking about Jesus being the king of the Jews, the king of this, the king of that, the king of this, right? And in it, he says, I wonder, I wonder, do you know him? And that's my question is, do you know him? Do you know God? If you do, if you do know God, then love is coming out of your life. If you do know God, then you're able to walk in faith. And obedience that's powerful pastor how do I get to being obedient to God how do I how do I get to a place by getting to know him by coming to God with your flesh with your brokenness with with all of your inadequacies with all of your sin and saying and laying it at his feet and saying here it is do something with this and he will take it and he will transform it from natural into supernatural. He will ch change it from the flesh into the spirit. He will. How do I do that? Spending time in the word, spending time in prayer. There's only two ways, only two ways to talk to God, only two ways to get to know God. And you've got to do the work, read his word. Ask the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. We read it every single day. Goodness, come on. Don't get so complacent that you don't listen to the things that we're reading. Don't get so complacent and say, yeah, I've been there, done that, heard that. No, that's pride. Humility says, maybe I need to hear it again. Maybe I need to hear it again. Maybe I need to hear it again because there's something in there for me. And there's always something in the word of God that comes to life. How do I do this, pastor? How do I live this life? How do I make that transformation from the natural into the supernatural because I'm so tired of living in the flesh. This is what these, these men of God, these mighty men of God that, that, that wrestled with God, Jacob wrestled with God. Why? Because he was sick and tired of being the usurper. He was sick and tired of living in his flesh, right? You, you, look, at, you look at times in David's life. You look, at, you look at Abraham when he comes to the, finally comes to the promise. He's tired of being Abram. And he says, God, I want to be the father of many nations. And he brings it all to God. And he says, here it is. That's where we need to be. All of our brokenness, all of our hopelessness, all of our sin, all of our shame. God wants it all. And he'll take up the pieces of your life and he'll put them back together and he'll set you on a rock to stand. He's not going to ridicule you. He's not going to shame you. He's not going to point the finger at you and preach at you because of what you've done. That's what we're afraid of. Is that, oh, God's going to lecture me. He's going to lovingly, compassionately pick up the pieces of your life and he's going to put them all back together and he's going to change you from the natural into the supernatural. You see, but that's the hard part is that we have to bring it. We have to be open and honest with God. And we have to say, God, here am I. Here it is all. My brokenness, my sin, my shortcomings, all my faults, my hopelessness.
So here we go. I'm going to say it one more time. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. You see, the very nature of God is love. It's not one of his attributes. I said this Wednesday night. When we need gas, we go to the gas station. Right? When I need love, I go to where? I go to the source of love. That is God. If you're sitting there this morning and you're saying, I need to learn to love people. Then you need to go to God. Quit trying to will yourself. Quit trying to love people out of willpower because that's the flesh. Start loving people out of knowing who God is in your life. How do I do that? just by what I said, is I bring everything that I have to God and I lay it at His feet and I say, God, do something with this mess. God, it's not a deal, listen to me, it's not a deal with me saying, God bless my mess so that I can do what I, continue doing what I want to do, no. It's about bringing it to God and saying, God, your will be done. You fix this. You correct this, and you set me where on the path that you want me to be on. Whew, that's powerful. So powerful. Amen. Rahab wasn't saved by faith alone. She had also demonstrated exceptional love of strangers. She hid the spies at the expense of her family. Her faith wasn't in her family. Her faith was in the God of the heavens above and the earth below. Her actions that she took was that she hid them. The love that she showed was that she welcomed them into her home. Rahab was acting out of obedience as a response to faith. Whew, that's powerful. That's where our, when our obedience comes, is in a response to the faith that is in our life. Rahab both preserved her own family and exemplified the sort of faith that the Israelites themselves would have had to have displayed to preserve the land and the heritage that God had promised them. You see, th this is a whole new chapter. The, 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 the chapter of coming out of Egypt ended when they crossed over into the promised land. You see, it was a new season. And God says, it's time to begin to conquer. It's kind of time to begin to take back what I've already given you. Oh, goodness gracious, right? It's, it's time to step over. We got to leave Moses behind. Oh my goodness, huh? Preach that message. We got to leave Moses behind. In Joshua. Whew. I'm going to leave it right there with you. But, but I'm going to give you two little nuggets. Two little nuggets that I'm going to talk about Sunday. Number one, the Word of God tells us, the Word of God tells us that Rahab's home was built into the wall, that she lived in the wall of Jericho. Read it.
God's about to bring down the walls. But she lives in the wall. God's going to set some people free. The second one I've already shared with you is that Abraham makes covenant with the God of the universe and all that he has. All he has to bring to the table is his flesh. And, 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 even, <laughs> and even at that, it is an unsightly part of his flesh. The foreskin. Think about that today. Okay? Think about that today. Okay? Because Sunday I'm going to share those things with you. And we're going to answer this question. We're going to answer the question, what does it take for me to move from the natural to the supernatural? How do I do that? I'm going to share that with you. Amen. Amen. So, hey, see you Sunday. Don't come alone. Don't come alone. Amen. Don't come alone. Find somebody. Invite somebody. Bring somebody with you that they might experience God the same way that you have. Amen. Amen. Hey, I love you. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Have a safe weekend. Uh, I know people are out and about in the summertime and, and we're enjoying the beautiful weather and the, the mountains and what stuff. Completely understand that. And, and, I, and, and, and I'm like, get some rest. Amen. Enjoy it. Amen. But listen to me. Get to church. Get into the Word. Spend time praying. Amen. And all of that. Don't get so busy that we don't have time for God. Okay? So, hey, I love you. God bless you. Have a blessed challenge, challenge of the day. That I, gave you, I gave you that, right? All right? Challenge of the day. I want you to, I want you to think about that. God, God's about to bring down the walls, but Rahab lives in the wall. God's about to bring down the walls, but Rahab lives in the wall. Amen. So, hey, I love you. God bless you. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you Sunday.